Hey there, welcome back to IndyCar on the 21st of June. So it's now actually midsummer, and uh, many people were watching at the various standing stones across uh, Scotland and the rest of the United Kingdom for the morning sunrise. Uh, a traditional celebration of the longest day and shortest night. Now, the midsummer period marks, uh, I suppose, another kind of a kind of pause, if you like, in political uh, machinations. But the, the Tories <coughs> have recently been trying, in their own particular way, first of all, to sabotage the Scottish um, drinks container recycling scheme and refund scheme, and they've successfully managed to block it using, well, their usual techniques. I think in this case, Section 35 of the Scotland Act. But they could also use the the um, the dreaded Internal Markets Act as well, if they wished. And this nonsense about keeping glass out of the recycling scheme has basically stopped the entire thing from happening. Now, the Tories never miss a trick. First thing they do is sabotage something which Scottish ministers are trying to do, and then try to blame the Scottish ministers for not succeeding. And that's exactly what they're doing, following the usual pattern of behaviour where they sabotage something first, and then blame the people that they've sabotaged. In this case, it's Lorna Slater. And the Tories were attempting uh, to raise a no-confidence vote in Lorna Slater, the leader of the Greens, unsuccessfully. And as you would expect, nobody in Holyrood was going to vote for that. So it's just another one of these Tory uh, ploys. They, they might as well not be there. The Tories, the Liberal Democrats and the Labour Party might as well not bother showing up at Holyrood because they have absolutely nothing positive to add to the governing of the country. Now in other news, some of you, uh, myself included in this list incidentally, may have been satisfied, I think is the word I would use, to hear that Glenn Campbell, the uh, BBC Scotland reporter who is, well, let's face it, well known for not being partial, or sorry, not being impartial when it comes to Scottish independence, has had a little bit of an accident. Apparently he was mountain biking somewhere in the mountains of Scotland, and the mountains of Scotland decided they didn't really like him, and he came off his bike in a rather spectacular way by all accounts, and according to Glenn himself, has broken ten ribs, and from the photographs he's um, showed on his, um, his online accounts. He seems to have uh, skinned his nose rather badly. You know, some people are pointing out karma's a bitch. And this is um, Scotland getting its own back on Mr Campbell for his recent, um, shall we say, non-part, non-part, what was I going to say there? Non-impartial, shall we say, reporting of the independence campaigning in Scotland. Now, quite apart from the usual nonsense coming from the BBC and the Tories, there is work going on in the background. And, um, I was Neil Hanvey yesterday presented um, a legal argument made by Professor McCorkadale, a, an eminent uh, constitutional legal expert, that the UK, or should I say the English Supreme Court, did not have the right to block an independence referendum in Scotland because independence and the search or the application of self-determination for all peoples, which is guaranteed under the United Nations Charter, um, states that self-determination is basic human right, and the English Supreme Court has no business at all in trying to block the democratic process which might lead to that. So that's the first thing, and this is one of the first of several legal challenges which have been prepared. The other thing that's going on at the moment, and I cannot tell you too much about it, is that there are other challenges being prepared, legal challenges against not just the United Kingdom government, but also the Scottish Parliament, in that this um, apparent acceptance by Scottish politicians that Westminster still has some kind of sovereignty over the people of Scotland needs to be corrected. And from a legal standpoint, um, Scotland is standing on solid rock. There is no um, you know, shifting sands under our feet when it comes to our constitutional rights. Scotland's sovereignty is guaranteed by three different documents in our history. And not only that, but it's also the precondition of the existing union with England. And England agreed to that. And this is why in uh, 2018, uh, the Scottish claim of right, uh, when it was raised that Westminster 
passed without division, and that means there was no uh, people filing to vote on it. And that's because the English state knows full well that self-determination and Scottish sovereignty are still in existence, and they dare not break it, because if they do anything to Scottish sovereignty in a public way in their parliament, they have effectively broken the prime, uh, I would say the prime directive in the Union when it comes to Scotland and England, and that is the separation of the two sovereignties. In England, their parliament is sovereign over them. In Scotland, the sovereignty rests with the Crown of Scotland, which incidentally is not the King, but is the community and the realm of Scotland. In other words, everybody who lives here. And because everybody who lives here is sovereign, then no parliament, Scottish or otherwise, or Welsh or English or any other kind of parliament, can challenge our sovereignty. And that means we will always have that sovereignty. Uh, Hamza Yusuf touched on this in his white paper promising a new uh, constitution for Scotland. And in that, he has promised uh, to enshrine in law the sovereignty of the Scottish people, which is uh, a very reassuring thing to see in such a document. However, it needs to, I mean, the Parliament in Edinburgh needs to be reminded also of its duties to the sovereign people of Scotland, and there will be another legal challenge, maybe more than one, um, issued in the coming months, which will remind our own politicians of the promises that they made to provide an independence referendum, not just once, but on eight separate occasions, and on each occasion they failed to provide it. And there are many legal experts and um, research groups and think tanks in Scotland at the moment who are preparing legal documents to serve to not just Westminster, Westminster but also to politicians in the government in Holyrood as well, reminding them of their duties to protect and uphold the liberties and the rights of the sovereign Scots. So we're coming to a, an interesting historical point in Scotland's uh, story, which is where the people decide what should happen in Scotland. With the United Kingdom attempting to block the uh, democratic route to exerting that sovereignty and choosing what form of government best suits our needs, in other words, whether we want to continue in the Union or not, in blocking that, England has effectively broken the Treaty of Union already, and documents such as these will remind the United Kingdom that it has taken a step too far with its Supreme Court ruling. And because of that, that Supreme Court ruling could be reversed legally in Scotland and a referendum held perfectly legitimately. If that is continued, uh, if the, the blocking of that continues by the English state, then the only other recourse is to have a plebiscite election where it is treated as a vote for independence only, and that is probably what's going to happen next. Anyway, that's the current situation, but I think it is rather amusing to think of Glenn Campbell sliding down a mountain on his nose and breaking ten ribs. I'm sorry, Glenn, I hope you get well soon. I'm really just kidding here. Um, but also notable, I think, was last night's Scottish football squad performance. Now, it was a, a bizarre evening with the heavens opening over Hamden and everywhere else, incidentally, because I got completely drenched as well last night. And the uh, squeegee men in the uh, stadium, all 23 of them, basically sweeping all of that water off the, uh, off the playing surface. The Scots, of course, running out there and starting to play on it. And uh, the opposition basically standing inside the dressing room saying they're not coming out to play, it's far too wet. And then eventually, of course, Scotland went 2-1, and it looks like, uh, sorry, they went 2-0, beg pardon. And Scotland are looking unassailable in their group now. A very potent force for the first time in a long time. The Scottish football team is beginning to look like it could go a lot further in the tournament than we've ever gone before. Let's hope that's the case. So congratulations to Scotland's national squad. Anyway, that's about all of the good news today. So Glenn Campbell skint his nose and broken ten ribs. The Tories have failed in their uh, no-confidence vote at Holyrood. And we won the football. So this has been a really good midsummer day. And I'm happy to report that at the moment, at least where I'm sitting, the weather is quite nice. So I'll see you again sh uh, shortly. Thank you to all the, the people who have donated to the IndyCar Fund. 
please keep it coming because if I'm going to keep up this pace with these programs, I need all help I can get. So I'm very grateful to everybody who continues to support this program. And if you want to do so, you can follow the link that's included in the description of this video. That's it from IndyCar today. As usual, as I say, keep the faith. Great things are afoot. And the political situation in Scotland is a lot, about to get a lot more interesting in the coming weeks. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.